Hey guys, this is Luke. In this video, I'm going to take you through some basic probability calculations, ranging from what we call simple probability, joint probability, marginal probability, and then we're going to cover the addition rule. So, let's get started with simple probability. So, simple probability is essentially just the probability that a simple event will occur. And what we mean by a simple event, you could also think of that as being a single event, a singular event, or an event that doesn't have any conditions attached to it. So, this is just simply the probability of a sole event occurring. And in that sense, you're going to see the probability of A, our simple event, as being X, the number of different ways in which that event A can occur, over T. And that's the total number of different outcomes that you could observe. So, for example, you may be measuring the probability that you pick a red ball out of a bag. There are four red balls in the bag, so the probability of drawing red is 4. And let's just say there are 10 balls in total in the bag, so your total number of outcomes possible is 10. Is 10. And that is a simple probability. So noting, of course, the simple probability is non-conditional, let's look at another example. So say, for example, that we have a 1,000 customers on Monday uh, at a coffee shop, and 750 of those purchased coffee. Now, if chosen at random, what would be the probability of somebody purchasing a coffee? Well, the total number of events, or in this case, customers in the sample, is going to be 1,000 with 750 purchasing coffee. So that is essentially our probability. The total number of people who purchase coffee divided by the total number of people in the sample, which of course gives us a probability of 0.75, or a 75% probability that if somebody was chosen on random on Monday, they would have purchased a coffee. So, let's move on now to joint probabilities. So joint probabilities is, is essentially a probability involving two or more events. So the idea of this is you're trying to measure, say, the probability of rain today and tomorrow, or the probability of A and B. So two events together. So in terms of how to actually calculate a joint probability, you're going to want to look on the numerator at the total number of events that satisfy your condition. So A and B occurring together. So essentially that's going to be the total number of A occurrence. So let's just say XA plus your total number of occurrence B, so XB. When these two happen at the same time, so I'll try and indicate that by using some brackets, divided by the total number of occurrences. So let's just say T. So again, what we're trying to measure here is every time that A and B occur together, divided by the total number of occurrences. So. Let's have a look at an example and hopefully this will get a little bit clearer. So, let's go back to our coffee shop and say we have those thousand customers yet again. Now, 750 of them now planned to purchase coffee, but actually only 500 of them did. Now, what is the probability that you both planned and purchased a coffee? then the probability in this case is going to be when A and B are both satisfied, i.e. when you planned and purchased, which is going to be 500 people. These people plan to purchase the coffee and then proceed to do so, which satisfies our condition. So we put down 500 over the total number of individuals in the sample or elementary outcomes, which would be 1,000, which gives us a probability of 0.5. Five. And that is a probability that somebody planned to purchase a coffee and purchased one. So that is essentially joint probabilities. So next up, let's look at marginal probability. So marginal probability is essentially a set of joint probabilities all added together. So for just for an example, uh, an event B may have two different occurrences, i.e. B1 and B2, and therefore the probability of 
A occurring, and A is some event that usually occurs with B, is then going to be the probability of A occurring alongside B1 and B2. So in that sense, the probability for any event A occurring in terms of marginal probability actually becomes a probability of that event occurring besides any number of other events that it may occur with, and so on. So the probability of A occurring is equal to the probability of A occurring with B1, B2, and so forth. An important thing to note here is that all of our B events are going to be mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. So what that means is that they cannot occur at the same time and that they make up the entirety of every possible event. So, just to, just to reinforce that, mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive events are those which cannot occur together. Cannot occur together. And collectively exhaustive implies that these events make up the entirety of our sample space or the entirety of our, say, possible spectrum of events that may occur with A. So they describe they describe all events that can occur. So if one doesn't occur, the other must occur. So they are all events that can occur. And a good example of collectively exhaustive events would be flipping a coin. If you don't get heads, you must get tails and vice versa. So let's look at a quick example of marginal probability. So again, let's just say we have those 1,000 peoples. Uh, and in, in this case, we have 500 males and 500 females. 300 of those males have blue eyes, and then 150 of the females have blue eyes. Now, if I wanted to measure the probability of getting of picking somebody at random who has blue eyes, you would want to write down all the times where you could actually find someone with blue eyes. So let's start with males. So there are 300 males who have blue eyes, and then there are 150 females. So this is essentially like looking at that event A being blue eyes occurring with males, and then the event A, i.e. blue eyes again, occurring with females. So A and B1 a and B2. Now, in order to compute the marginal probability, we have to see the, the probability of picking a male with blue eyes, which of course would be the number of events which satisfy our criteria, males with blue eyes, divided by the total number of people in the sample, being a thousand. Then the same thing for females, which gives us 450 divided by a thousand, or a probability of 0.45. So if you were to pick an individual at random, the probability of choosing one with blue eyes would be 45%. And how we calculated that was by looking at all the circumstances where blue eyes occur in our males category and the females category. Finally guys, let's just look at what is called the addition rule. So essentially, what the addition rule is trying to convey is how to find the probability of A or B occurring. So if we think about marginal probability, we were looking at all the circumstances where two events occur together. In this case, what we're looking at here are the circumstances where either A or B occur, but not together. So, in this case, we're going to have to consider a couple of different scenarios to make up that probability. The probability that A occurs, the probability that B occurs, and then in order to isolate when they occur by themselves, we have to also consider when they occur together. So, therefore, the probability of an event A or an event B occurring will be that probability that A occurs, plus the probability that B occurs, and then in order to isolate these probabilities as being the probabilities of A or B occurring by themselves, we need to subtract the probability that A and B occur together. And that is essentially the addition rule. So those are just a few basic probability calculation rules, guys. Hope that was helpful. See you later. Cut 
study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.